What's going on? It's good to meet you at last. Oh, it's good to meet you too. I am very, very excited to be here. Obviously, I I mean, not for nothing, kind of owe everything to you. Not at all. So, not yeah, at all, not absolutely. Not at all, not at all, not no, at all. No, I do. Let's crouch at the bar for a second because let's be honest, the music you've been making and the way that you've been dealing with it and reaching your fans directly and using the platforms that are on offer but doing it your own way is all you. And fans know that. They came to us. We played the record and they came to us and said to us, this is the right move, <laughs> right? We knew it. That's instinct. The diligence comes from the audience. Your audience are galvanized, man. Yeah, it's cool. They're like incredibly enthusiastic. And I think one of the things I've learned so far about this project is that I have a pretty, pretty strong personality um, and it shines through in multiple um, you know, elements of this of this venture that I'm on. Yep. Um, and the, the thing I've, I've come to notice is that People either really, really love me enough to tattoo my lyrics on their body and like fly across the world to come see me, yeah. or they hate me so much that they wake up every day and run a Twitter account dedicated to how much they hate me. Right. But either way, I'm provoking such an incredibly strong reaction out of people. Divisive is the nature and, of the yeah. modern way. That's the way it goes. If you want to put yeah. yourself out there, you know, there's every chance that you're going to divide opinion. Yeah. And it's incredibly polarizing to be an artist as well. I think that anyone who creates something that, you know, is meant to evoke emotion, is, in, is meant to provoke a feeling from someone one is bound to have that split totally. you know reaction like Kanye West you know an incredible totally. artist and I think that a lot of people hate him and but also there are people who would die for him you know and a lot of the, the, the greatest artists that I've ever you know I've ever loved or I've ever looked up to have been artists that have that very very polarizing split where people either love them or they hate yes. them and I'm seeing that with New Americana so much right now where people think it's like you know the social commentary the satirical pop song you know what I mean like because the song is a sad Tire, yeah, you know? of course. And then the people who don't get that, who are like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, that's because you're taking it seriously. Right. You know? Um, so it's been it's been such an interesting thing to watch. And also been really cool to see a lot of my really young fans, to see how intelligent they are. Because not, nothing goes past them. They, they pick up on every little tiny, you know, calculated detail that I put into it. And it makes it so gratifying for me because, like, it's worth it, you know, to do that and to make moves that are, you know, strategic and to make moves that are well thought out and formulaic for them, you know, hoping they'll discover it. And then they do. And I'm like, yes, you guys are so smart. Like, I love watching it. How is it that artists are some of the most sensitive, vulnerable people in the world and yet their whole entire aesthetic is based around putting their ass on the line? I almost think it's like a form of masochism i'm completely there it's so funny because i'm incredibly political and i'm incredibly incredibly outspoken online i find myself in interviews saying stuff to people and they're looking at me like oh. I, what i've learned and this is this is a side note but it's, it's relevant i promise is that you know with my project i have learned it's been so much more successful for me to be myself i pride myself on being an artist who's authentic who's real and not an artist who says they're authentic and real someone who genuinely is i don't censor myself i say whatever i'm thinking all the time i don't worry if it's not you know upkeeping a personality upkeeping a brand there's no mood board were you raised that way did your parents ever did, did they say no to you um yeah absolutely but my parents had me when they were really really young so it was just really encouraging of me figuring out who i am right um but they were also, you know, guinea pigging me. They had no idea how to raise a kid, you know. I remember being 18 years old and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. I can't afford to go to college. And they're looking at me like, we don't know what to do either. I'm, damn. Like, you know what I mean? That their mm. hands in the air and all of us just kind of having this moment of panic. Mm. But um, I don't have a mood board hanging up on the wall in my bedroom that's like, okay, so these colors are Halsey and this way of talking is Halsey mm, and mm, this way mm. of dressing is Halsey. I change how I dress all the time. Change how I talk all the time because I'm a person. I'm multidimensional. I'm not a brand. The thing is, is like the more... Uh, you know, honest and the more personal that I can be, the more these these people are likely to be like, cool, we believe her. Like, so when she says buy this thing, she must really mean buy this thing. She's not just trying to sell us BS. Yeah, the trust you is know? crucial in this day and age amongst the artistic community and the relationship that you foster with your audience. And hopefully the role that places like Beats One provide is to say, mm -hmm. you know what, here's an artist you can trust. Here's an audience looking for something to believe in. Yeah. And we're the proud bridge to try and make that happen or at least help that happen. And I think that trust is crucial. How thick is your skin? I was going to say, I think that's the masochism in it is the fact that I need to be myself and put myself on the line all the time. And it's almost like this this sacrifice in a, in a yeah. weird way. It's like, and it's such an arrogant way to think of yourself as like this as like this martyr, like, oh, I'll let myself get beat up because someone has to say it. You know what I mean? But that's really how I feel. You know, it's like I would rather get absolutely chastised and crucified for, you know, 
being like this about my opinion or being like this about my sexuality, about my personality, about whatever, because someone has to. Someone has to. I'm not suggesting I'm the only artist who does. That would be ridiculous. You know, New Americana has brought up all these, oh, Halsey, the voice of a generation. Like, no, that's not what I want to be. I am the voice of myself. I would not be arrogant enough to walk into a room and say, yeah, I, uh, I cover all the bases. Yeah, um, yeah. Incredible. But would you go on a cover of a magazine that suggested that title? I would probably ask them to put New Americana Voice of the Generation because if the song wants to speak for people, that's fine, but I'm not going to. Like, if people decide that they vibe with the song and the song speaks to something in them, that's great, but the song has its own voice. The song at this point is taking on its own shape, and in that, as, as my job as a songwriter, is to do that. You know, my songs are supposed to speak for me initially, and then they're supposed to grow and evolve and turn into something else, and that's, that's the thing for me, is I'm not the voice of a generation, I'm speaking for myself, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I am in a very, very versatile position, you know, and this gets talked about all the time. I'm half black, I'm half white, I have bipolar disorder, I'm bisexual, you know, I'm in such a such a split of the world. So there's a lot of, you know, walks of life that I relate to and a lot of walks of life that I understand. So in writing this song, it was a satire about that, about growing up in diversity, about growing up as the kid who didn't fit anywhere. There's an expression in Norwegian that um, translates to falling between two chairs. And it's when you're trying to sit down and you fall between two chairs. It's so funny as a metaphor, like I get it, because you know what, that, that fe fleeting moment, that feeling where you're, you think you're about to sit down yeah. and you miss the chair and fall between them, like I feel like that kind of every day, so right, like, I right. kind of get it. I've never really, I've never really fit in anywhere. Vince Staples said here the other day, he was like, there's only so many people that think different that are allowed to fit in. You know, if you're bold enough to say it, if you're bold enough to stand up yeah. and express yourself and be honest about how you feel, yeah. no one can stop you fitting in. I don't. I mean, my my skin is not that thick, though. You know, I've got I've got like half a million followers on Twitter. Um, it's nothing compared to like One Direction's 24 million or whatever. You know what I mean? But my level of engagement is so incredibly high. The thing that I've learned is. I need to pay attention. I know I have a lot of friends who are artists who say, oh, don't read, don't search your name, don't blah, 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 blah. But I have to because I... that's where I find the good things. Ha. And I don't mean compliments. No, I know. I mean, that's, that's where I find a kid who says, that's where the good stuff is. I would love if Halsey did this. Yeah. You know, the reason for me being so involved with my fans is because I need to know them. And unfortunately, what that means is as I'm scrolling and I'm seeing, well, I wish Halsey would play here, and I wish Halsey would do this, and I wish Halsey would blah, 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 and I love when Halsey... But unfortunately, I'm scrolling through... Awful a, shit. ...a ton of tweets that say, I wonder who Halsey slept with. Her music's not that good. Or, you know, tweets that say, um, I can't stand Halsey because she says she's half black and half white, but she only looks white, and I think she's lying. You know, when you read those things... I think so much is, of it is about the context of the day and what you're going through. Yeah, there are days absolutely. you feel bulletproof. You know, I got my crew behind me, my fans are beside yeah. me, my records sound good, yeah. I got some good news. You know what? Take that comment and stick it. Yeah, I scroll past something and I go, oh, okay, but oh, like, blah, 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 blah. Right, like, right, right. You know, I scroll past something that's like, Halsey's a bad feminist because she blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. What are you doing? I'm at least out here talking about it and, you know, trying to start the conversation and talking. You're behind a computer at home. I'm a bad feminist because of blah, 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 but what are you doing Yeah. besides criticizing how I'm doing something? And, you got to find you know, a way through it, man. I do, and I do. I'm, I, I'm getting much better. Because it's just starting for you. Uh, Let me tell I know, it's you. So much worse. You talk about um, 500,000 Twitter followers right now. Let's, let's have another, let's catch up in six months and yeah. see where you're at. Well, I gained 400,000 in the past five months. I mean, the anticipation for your album for Badlands is huge. Which is you awesome. Know? I mean, it's great, you know, and the records that have come out have set that up and teed that up brilliantly. Yeah. You've come out there and teed it up, but, you know, you've said this is a concept record. Yeah. I do concept music. I don't mm -hmm. go in there. I don't try and put 10 of the best songs I'm co-writing with yeah. 10 great writers <laughs> together and bish, bosh, bash, there you go, top 40 radio, which is why you're perfect for us because we don't play that game. Awesome. <laughs> so, so, you know, you've, you've, you've created this concept record and concepts have been really lacking yeah. They're not. I can't write any other way. That's one thing I've come to realize, you know, in, in writing. And, like, you know, I'm so I'm so excited for the album to come out because I think it's going to help me a lot with what we were just talking about. Because right now, all anyone, all anyone has to talk about, like, is my personality and is this and what I say and my Twitter and my this and my that. I'm about to put out a record that is a better reflection of me than I can ever possibly articulate yeah. on a social media. And I'm going to let that speak for myself. And then I'm going to let them change their tone and change what they're saying. And I'm, and I'm really excited to watch it happen because, you know... I'm talking to you right now yep. 
as someone who knows about my my whole record, I know what my body of work is. I know what I've said, what I've done, what I've accomplished, what I've indicated on this record. And I'm talking to you with the air of someone who knows all these things. It's the hardest thing for an artist to do is make a record and, and hand it in, you know, hands shaking, cold sweat, hand it to someone and say, God, I hope I still like this in six months mm. when it comes out mm. and I need to believe in it. And I am like just thrilled with it. Good. You know, I I really, really think that I did the best I could. And it's been so therapeutic for me because six months ago I was incredibly insecure about the record. I was like, oh, what if people don't like it? What if it doesn't blah, blah, blah? What if it doesn't blah, blah, blah? And, you know, now I'm here and I'm like, I know because I still like it because I still believe in it, I know that I did everything in my power to make that record the best thing that it could be. And if people don't like it, there's nothing more that I could have done. It was a risky thing to do. You know, I'm here I am, and <clears throat> I call my record company and I say, I'm making this concept album. And everyone goes, <gasps> what do you mean? You are the, the Tumblr blue haired right. pop icon, girls love you, you're dropping the ball. You could make something so, and I'm like, oh, f you, like, whatever. Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, I'm going to make the album I want to make. And so, you know, we sat down to do Badlands, and it, it, it just turned into a monster, like, in the best way. Like, it became so scientific. Like, I sat down and originally, you know, came up with this idea for the concept, which is this post-apocalyptic society. It's this booming metropolis, neon lights, <clears throat> people, like, uh, a corrupt government. This is just, like, moving, rotating city, surrounded by desert wasteland and what the desert does is it keeps people from the surrounding societies of the world from getting into the city and it keeps people from the city of badlands from escaping because no one can make it through the desert mm -hmm. um you would die mm -hmm. and so i start working this concept i'm like what do the people look like what do the buildings look like what are the colors what is this what's the history what's the blah blah where do i fit in like where where's my place in in the badlands and uh, about halfway through working this i have like a serious uh, like body shattering epiphany the entire thing is a metaphor uh, for a mental state. So, you know, in the center of my head is this booming metropolis with, you know, uh, you know, corrupt forces and neon lights and it's buzzing, it's revolving, it's Anxieties, never sleeping. Anxieties, depression. And it's surrounded by unexplored territory. People can't come in and I can't escape. And, you know, that came even further for me because all of a sudden I realized I'm regressing. It's a defense mechanism. I'm creating an imaginary playland that when I get home from a really busy day of press, of flights, of whatever, I don't have to deal with my real life because I can go home and I can work on Badlands. You can compartmentalize yourself away into the it artistic process. It yeah. became an obsession. Yeah. And then, Which is what art is. It is obsessive compulsive. Absolutely. Um, but I thought I, I, didn't, I thought something was wrong with me. I've never done a body of work this big. Mm. You know, so here I am like, oh my God, I'm, I'm crazy. Like I'm actually crazy. Something is wrong with me. But you know, it was also incredibly therapeutic because I'm having this realization and I'm accepting it. And you know, it got so scientific for us because I wanted people to my favorite records that I've ever loved are records that I feel like I uh, exist in their own universe the Arctic Monkeys record AM I feel like that is their own black and white graphic novel leather jacket rainy street world you know the 1975 record very mm. similar Kanye West records all of them <laughs> um, like even like the Lana Del Rey records a lot of records that Mill Haney's done like you know just this idea of creating an, a, a space creating a world but I wanted to take that further and I wanted to create physical parameters so when Lido and I sat down to do the record um you know it got scientific it was if I throw a rock at a wall 50 feet away how long will it take for me to hear the echo apply that delay to the percussion if I'm talking to you from a room from the back of the room and I have my hands cupped and the room is about this big this tall and made of this material how far will my voice echo put that reverb on my vocal and you know just taking all of these very scientific ideas of how sound reacts in space in, in certain spaces and in certain you know environments mm. applying it to the songs and then hoping that when a listener listens they feel that this song is claustrophobic because they hear the textural hum that you can't hear the hum but we put the hum in the song texturally so you'd feel like you were underground mm. Or, you know, they feel that this song is wide and open because of the one droning note that kind of pans back and forth, kind of giving the idea of this open space. So it became scientific, and every single song on Badlands is a different part of the landscape. There's a Badlands website, and there's a Badlands gift shop, and we've done, you know, secret codes and secret leaks and this kind of, like, guerrilla warfare. There's a Badlands gift shop? It. Everything, and it's free.
<laughs> actually. Um, so you see that's a gift shop, and you go, oh, this is some ploy for her to make money, and you click on it, but it's actually free. It's so free. kids get posters and stuff like that, and we're just kind of giving them away so they can be like a part of it or whatever. But, you know, we've leaked a couple songs. I hope my record company doesn't hear that I just said that. They're they in there, so they do. They actually um, don't know, but I, we leaked a couple songs. It's cool, too, because it doesn't ruin anything. The and also, get it, and then everyone else has no idea it happened. Let me ask you a question, because the way you described yourself before and the way that you know you 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 deal with your brain and your mind yeah. it works with you and also works against you which sure. anybody listening whether admit it or not can relate self aware to the point of a fault right yes which comes with things like anxiety or bipolar yeah. syndrome or anything else it, it really focuses on the negative as Absolutely. much as the positive Putting yourself out on that stage with the hunger that you have to yeah. get your art out there get your fans to be you know yeah. absolutely love what you're doing do you have the right team behind you because it's it's going to get crazy. My team is incredible, and I have so much, you know, investment in this project that it's like you. there's two really bad things that could potentially happen to me. And the first one would be that I pretty much, you know, drive myself crazy, and this kills me because of how over-involved I am and how, you know, my brain is this revolving door that is consistently moving through the motions of this. I wake up and I live this. I, I live this. Like, you know, a lot of these kids think I have some some life, and I, I don't. Like, I don't. I don't have friends. I don't go out. I don't do anything. Every single day I wake up, and this is all that I do from morning to night. And then when I lay down on my bed at night, my brain doesn't shut off. My brain never shuts off. It is constantly thinking about this. And, and my brain has always been that way, always been very buzzing, like a machine that's overworking itself like since I was a little kid. Um, but now it's it's, it's like a speeding bullet getting faster. And I'm wondering when I'm going to hit something. The second really bad thing that could happen to me would be that I let this, you know, consume my personality and I let, you know, the fortunate successes that I've had take me to a point of arrogance. But the thing is, is I'm so self-deprecating and so self-critical all the time that I don't think that could happen. Like when I walk out on stage and I play a show, it doesn't matter if it's 500 kids in the club, 20,000 people on an Imagine Dragon show, 6,000 people headlining a festival at night, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Honestly, nine times out of 10, I walk off stage and I look at someone and I go, God, that was fucking awful. I did this and I did that. And, I fucking... and someone looks at me and goes, Ashley, what are you talking about? That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, sadly, yeah. even the people close to you will never feel it the way you do because well, you're I'm making it. And I'm, over, I'm constantly overcorrecting. And that's the thing, I'm trying to keep my head up and constantly overcorrect myself without everyone around me realizing that I am just constantly in fear of not doing this right. Um, and I care about my fans so much. Every time some kid, because you know, I'm, I'm a 20-year-old girl, you know what I mean? I don't have this sense of like, yes, I'm above you, buy my things, do my stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm one of you. I've been a fan of something before. Thank you for making me that thing for you. And like, every time my kid comes up to me and shows me a tattoo of my lyrics they have on my body, I walk away thinking, oh God, well, I really can't fuck this up now or this kid's gonna feel really dumb in a couple years. Every time I do something, whether it's, a lot it's of pressure. play a show, put out an album, do an interview, whatever, I'm thinking to myself, I got to do it for those kids with the tattoos because I don't want them to be 40 and have to explain this girl that fell off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm serious. Everybody it's, has to explain their tattoos at 40. But I just mean, like, from a metaphorical <laughs> standpoint, like, oh, yeah, she was the singer and then it didn't work out and yeah. she was, like, a one-hit wonder and, like, whatever. Yeah. But I really believed in her at the time, so I got this. I don't want that. I want someone when they're 40 to be able to say, this is a Halsey tattoo and for their friends to know who the f*** that is.